All right, you know the drill. I'm gonna start this thing off with some beautiful drone footage. Um, my wife took over as pilot in command while I uh, chased it down with the Phantom. Uh, you can see that I've added 16 solar cells. Now, I didn't know this, but uh, just about every solar cell makes half a volt, no matter how big it is. The size determines how much current that it can flow or cause to flow. Um, so my 16 cells make about 8 volts. Uh, my battery is a 3S and that's about 12, 11 or 12. So I needed a way to step up that voltage. Uh, unfortunately, the right tool for the job, an MPPT charge controller, maximum power point tracking charge controller, uh, most of them only do, well the ones that I've seen, only do step down, which means that your panel voltage needs to be higher than your battery voltage. Uh, I made that mistake. So despite having, I don't know, 40 or so watts of solar cells, the voltage was uh, too low. So uh, I had to use a DC to DC buck converter to take that eight and step it up to the, I don't know, 12-ish uh, to charge the battery. Um, actually, I had that set to 12 and a half volts. So during the very first part of the flight, when the battery was about 12.6 or so, um, the solar cells were not charging. I launched uh, a little bit before noon. So uh, I launched in good sunlight. You can see the good harsh sunlight with the harsh shadows. Uh, the takeoff did not go very well. Despite being at about three quarters throttle, I was only drawing 14 amps. You can't tell, but the motor was like hesitating or stuttering. It was really weird. Um, at first I thought that the motor was burnt out because the motor can only handle about 22 amps and when the battery is fully charged it can draw more than that at full throttle. So that's why I have takeoff throttle limited to just 75%. Anyway, um, I was able to catch it in time, flip it over into manual and uh, manually climb it up to its holding altitude of 350 feet. Um, after the takeoff though, uh, it, it was fine, yeah, so I think maybe the ESC is bad, I'm not sure, I need to test both things and uh, definitely work out that problem. Uh, that might explain, if it's the ESC or motor or whatever, that might explain uh, why the aircraft's efficiency was quite a bit lower than usual. Um, the airplane with the solar cells added and the little... Uh, DC to DC converter only weighs about five or six percent more than normal because I left that really big lithium-ion battery in there <clears throat> so uh, at first you can see uh, there's not too much blue sky you can see a little bit there but there is a uh, pretty good uh, white veil of overclass overcast uh, skies um, of course, the sun can still get through, but it's it's less than ideal. Um, whew, let's see here. Um, three hours and ten minutes in, 100 miles across the ground. We're doing pretty good. Uh, a good number to keep an eye on is the one in the top right. That's milliamps consumed. Uh, the battery is only 45,000, uh, but you will see I draw 54,000 out of the battery and that's possible because the solar cells were recharging the battery slowly during flight um, yeah so if I had it to do over again I would have selected smaller cells so that I could fit more of them on there um, I found a good charge controller but it wants uh, I think 22 or 23 volts uh, as the solar input voltage so yeah, I needed cells that were smaller so that I could fit, geez, almost 50 cells on there is what I would need to fit. Um, it's the same area, so the power, the wattage would be the same, but the voltage would be higher, which is what the char charge controller really wants. So we're at seven hours and 10 minutes. We've pulled 49,000 milliamps from the battery. Um, I'm at nine volts, which is when I would normally land but we were breaking ground and I was like, whatever, I'll keep flying it down lower. Um, it's a lithium ion cell, so seven and a half volts, uh, three volts per cell, excuse me, two and a half volts per cell is when damage occurs. So I flew it down to eight volts and then brought it in for a landing. 
landing just shy of eight hours. I really, really wanted eight hours, but um, seven hours and 54 minutes and 229 miles across the ground. Uh, not bad. Uh, you'll see the data later. The aircraft was performing uh, worse than usual. Yeah. So there's the plane. Here are the solar cells, Maxion C60 solar cells. You get 20 of them for 70 bucks. Uh, they're flexible, but you need a really, really big airplane to get the voltage to be high enough. Um, when you buy them, at least from full battery, uh, you can get these uh, tabs that come with it. And um, yeah, they make life really easy, actually. Uh, soldering, it was not difficult. Uh, the cells were pretty durable. Um, you can see I'll pick up a string of eight by each end and kind of hang it like a suspension bridge as I move it from one place to another. And the cells were fine. Yeah, pretty durable. Um, I did end up cracking two, and I think it was because the covering film shrank at a weird angle that stressed the cells. Um, that happened on the first wing that I was covering, not the second. So it seems that um, it was just kind of a newbie mistake. Once I got them all together, I tested them. Um, Yep, making, when I angle the panel into the sun, 46 watts peak. I was super excited at this point because I'm like, man, that's a ton of energy. Anyway, uh, once you cover them and once you try to step up that voltage instead of stepping down the voltage, uh, you lose quite a lot of that energy. So sad. Anyway, laid the cells down, traced them out, and did quite a bit of foam fish filleting here um, so you can see the nice trench that I made for the cells uh, they laid in there pretty nicely I added some wire to the ends and um, made some holes uh, for that to run down the other side this is the laminating film it's made for documents you get uh, how much uh, 500 feet of it for $18 and it's uh, 12 inches wide and uh, once I tack the edges down with the iron I grab the heat gun to melt the adhesive and stick them to the solar cells it's kind of a neat process to watch it change but oh do you see all that extra material right there that I'm working on uh, yeah that cell cracks and the next one cracks also yeah and it seems to be cracking along the angle of that, the lines of that extra material. So, yeah, learn from my mistakes. Um, I, the laminating, the covering is definitely the hardest part. There you can see the two cracks. I thought it was game over. Um, I went ahead and did the other wing. I was able to do that one without cracking it and I took it outside and tested it. And it worked, obviously to a lesser degree. I think the crack plus the film, um, resulted in a bit less output power um, yep here they are um, pulling 35 watts there uh, this is the DC to DC converter on one side I had an XT60 that connected to the solar cells and on the other end I put a 3s balance lead so that plugged into the balance lead of the battery and that's how it charged here are the skies as you can see they're not exactly blue skies um, Here's my ground track uh, around the park. You can see those take off in the six, seven o'clock position and then landing up there at the one, two o'clock position. This is voltage over the course of the nearly eight hours. And then we have current, which is quite a bit of up and down. I mean, the uh, airplane did make about 200 plus laps so there's quite a bit of variation there's throttle I set the minimum throttle to 50% so it wouldn't go below that thinking that uh, if it didn't slow down too much then it wouldn't have to surge the throttle as much but uh, the airplane was not flying well this is the airspeed that it calculated um, and then here is the ground speed and this changes quite a bit of course because you're going with the wind and then against the wind with it and then against it so there's quite a bit of up and down but you can see that it thins as it goes on which means the wind is laying down um, this is the horizontal degree of precision so this is how accurately it knew its position during the almost eight hour flight this is the number of satellites 
that it was using across that. So anywhere from 14 to 22 satellites. Um, this is the height as measured by the barometer. And so it thought that it was holding an even altitude. Uh, in reality, it was actually dipping a bit. So this is the GPS altitude. And for some reason, Arduplane favors the barometer over the GPS. I'm not sure uh, the details of that. Maybe somebody else does. But this is the vertical speed from the GPS. Uh, you can see that there's a decent amount of up and down. That's meters per second. So it was constantly rising and falling. So the solar cells, despite the two cracks, the covering film and the inefficient DC to DC converter, um, they did contribute to the plane's overall energy budget. Um, they allowed the plane to use 120% of its battery um, or 35% more energy used than the average of the last two flights. So despite having all that extra energy and only being 6% heavier, the overall flight performance was very, very poor. Um, the only change I made to the flight controller settings was the minimum throttle was set to 50%, which shouldn't have made much of a difference. Uh, it was a bit windier, so I'm sure that accounts for part of it, but I think that there's probably an issue with the motor or the ESC. Uh, we saw that weird stuttering on takeoff, and I think that uh, during flight, whenever it would ramp above about 50% throttle, it would probably go into that weird stuttery thing where it was still making some thrust like we saw on takeoff, but it was not working very efficiently. So uh, I'm going to investigate that further, and uh, if that is the problem, um, I'll have it undergo at a, uh, a long duration flight with a new ESC or new motor or both. Thanks for watching.